I'll talk if you'll listen. Episode three. Three weeks, guys. How about that? How about that? This is still a hobby to me. Something I genuinely enjoy doing. But three weeks, man. Kind of just flew by. Oh, boy. Started this mid-January. And didn't know where it would go. Here we are, February. And we're still full swing. February, Black History Month, we know, is... In full effect, a lot of celebratory tweets and Facebook posts. Uh, Unfortunately, you won't see much beyond that. Hopefully, you'll see some people put certain things into action. But Black History Month is really important for a lot of people. Uh, I've always been indifferent up until recently about Black History Month. Uh, It was always just pounded down my throat, especially being in a... Densely, so in an urban environment and majority of which which was black. See, a lot of people relate urban to black, and I don't. I think that's unfair to everybody who lives in that culture, because you could have Hispanics, especially Hispanics, but Hispanics, Asians, white people, um, who grew up in densely urban environments and have very similar traits, but they kind of just get grouped into the whole black mindset but um completely different black and urban but in my case urban and black um, i don't remember as other than the teachers a single white person in my elementary school very few non-blacks in my middle school it didn't really start to open up until about high school and even still even then it it wasn't really like a huge huge difference there but it was always jammed down your throat in school. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about you. Maybe some of you all can relate, but it's always jammed down your throat. And a part of me kind of wanted just to get away from that and just like, hey, just because I'm black, it doesn't mean I have to be prideful or super supportive about Black History Month. And as I got older and I grew into my adult life, I understood the significance of it. Um, I understood why it's so important to some people. And I definitely didn't want to come off as inconsiderate. You know, I definitely didn't want to come off like you know screw your history screw your culture screw my history screw my culture and i definitely have become more partial and definitely more supportive of it over the years and it it holds a special place in my heart and what about you all i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts you know um shoot me an email i'll talk if you'll listen at hotmail.com so i can read some of these responses uh and tweet them throughout the week and read them on next week's show. Try to mix it in. I really ap- uh, appreciate all the feedback I've gotten so far, guys. Um, it's been been very encouraging and just awesome when you can just share a discussion with somebody. I think it's pretty cool. But uh, what? Tell me, communicate with me. What does Black History Month mean to you? Why is it significant? And and try not to. Uh, part one of my goals of one of my goals of this podcast is to have like an open mind, have people be open minded, have people really think about their answer. And I really want you to think as to why, you know, just let me know, you know, if you're if you know what it means to you and why it means what it means to you. What was your turning point? Um, you know, this again, like I mentioned, like I alluded to earlier, you know, a lot of people just had it shoved down their throat oftentimes same as religion you know just shoved down your throat and the next thing you know you support it and you don't even know why i remember the first time vaguely the first time i was aware of my own race and i know that may seem seem weird to some of you all but when you grow up with the majority of the people who look like you act like you talk like you behave like you you don't really separate yourself off of race you separate yourself off of things like hey what type of clothes do i like versus what type of clothes this person likes what's my favorite color what are my favorite activities things like that Uh, what are some of the things i have in my home compared to this person things like that you don't really think about race because everyone's the same color as you you don't really have to think about it so it's one of those things where you don't know if you don't know and I didn't know. I didn't know I was black. Like, I knew I was black, but I didn't know what that meant. I, I, 
I didn't understand that I was black, if that makes sense. You know, you can know something and not understand it. You can know the sky is blue, but not understand why it's blue. So I knew I was black. I just didn't understand why I was black. And when I saw the only other people that I saw that were of different color outside of they were all like these unrelatable, unrealistic people to me. Like I would see them on TV. You know, like I would see them in the form of a cartoon and I would just go, oh, that's just the color of the cartoon. You know, I wouldn't think like, oh, that's a white character in, in this cartoon. Or I would see the news or movie or what have you and see that the actor or actresses or hosts or news anchors were white. But I didn't think like, oh, they're the white race. I just looked at them as a person that was just a different color. Same thing in school. I had teachers. They were just different colors they just were adults i viewed them as adults and not as white people i really didn't start to set in until like i mentioned high school where i started to realize wow you know these people aren't just differently these people aren't just different in skin tone they're different culturally as well they're different in the way that they behave they're different in how they address each other and behave towards their parents and that was huge to me when I saw my first Asian friend and I know that's weird to say but it's my first Asian friend when I saw my first Asian friend and how he behaved and spoke to and around his parents it was amazing to me never seen anything like that and I really want to see you hear you guys's thought and when did you what was your first wake-up call when did you first realize that you were your race when did, when did you first realize like you know what this guy or girl isn't the same as me and for me that's when it was and my asian friend you know i went over to his house for dinner and it was a big deal because i thought it was more than what it really was because i never got invited over my black friend's house for dinner that wasn't a thing that we did it was your home before they even cook because they didn't really even have a one black families in my neighborhood didn't have family dinner you didn't sit down we we kind of did it at my place at my house growing up in my family but as we got older we kind of got away from it but no black families none of my black friends they never had family dinner that wasn't a thing until huge events like barbecues or holidays it wasn't like you know hey wednesday night dinner with the family um, if I ever had dinner with friends and family um, outside of just a normal holiday, it was just by chance. It was a coincidence. You know, I was over their house and they just so happened to cook and they asked me if I wanted a plate. But my Asian friend invited me over for dinner and it was an event like, hey, this is a regular thing that we have. And I saw the family environment. I saw the way the, the my friend regarded his parents and the rest of the family and how they treated me. And even some of the questions they asked me, that's when I realized, wow, you know, this race is different. So I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. You know, tweet at me. Tweet at me is uh, I-T-I-Y-L underscore I-T-I-Y-L on Twitter. Uh, idle, idle at Twitter. Just tweet at me. Let me know what you think. Email me. I'll talk if you'll listen at Hotmail.com. Let me know. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. That sounds very I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say um, about that. And it's really important. I'd really be interested to hear from you guys. Uh, another thing going on with Black History Month, we have Black Panther coming out February 16th. Coming out this month, 16th of this month. And me personally, I just think it's a coincidence that, well, maybe not that it's coming out Black History Month. A lot of people... We're really, really happy for this movie, but you got kind of like two types of people. You got the type of people specifically within the black community who are just excited because it's Black Panther. It's another Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe movie. It looks good. All of them look good. We're at the point now where technology is amazing, so all of these special effects look amazing. So a lot of people looking forward to that from that perspective perspective other people are like super pro blacks so that are like you know i can't wait for this to come out this looks great i can't wait to see it you know uh black power all black cast uh this is a huge step forward for black culture for the black community for the black race 
And a lot of people are taking it from from that perspective. And a lot of people, it really is significant to them. It really sits in a special place inside their heart. And they're really passionate about the whole, you know, black cast and oriented black movie. And, you know, some people are like, hey, I'm happy for that. It's a happy coincidence. But it's a movie that takes place in Africa. It'd be kind of weird if it didn't take place you know the move the movie that remind that was really significant and the only movie to me personally and i might catch a lot of flack for this but i don't really care i can defend myself i can take it bring it on but the only movie to me was meteor man meteor man was like an all-black cast and was really significant because it was in an environment i mean one will argue urban environment but we already talked about that right urban doesn't 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 just necessarily mean black but it was an urban environment and it was an all black cast. But that was realistic. That was a realistic setting, you know, a setting where you would see someone that wasn't black, a non black person. You know, you would see an Asian, a Hispanic, a white person, you know, a Middle Eastern person. You know, you you see somebody um, that wasn't black in that type of environment. But that movie went out of its way to include that an all black cast. So that was really, really cool. Right. And you take a movie like Black Panther, I think, well, the movie takes place in Africa. So, of course, it, it would make sense to add the majority of the cast African and or black. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense to me personally that it would be a lot of main characters who weren't uh, from Africa or who weren't of black origin. It's just what makes sense to me so a lot of people uh you know but hey you know and, and that's the point a lot of people care about certain things and they need it to mean certain things they need it to mean something for them just like you, you need to believe that this is a huge step up for blackness because you need you need that for your belief system some people don't need that for their belief system to believe that their culture or that race is progressing some people don't need that some people don't require that some people do and hey look if you want to look at that as a sign of progression by all means i mean what's the big deal if it doesn't hurt anybody why not me personally i don't i think it's just a movie but at the same time i am pretty happy that i can see a movie where the majority of the cast looks like me someone not you know people i can relate to so that's pretty cool. Um, and some people who don't think it's cool, it's actually a, some people who are actually protesting the movie, believe it or not. And for various reasons, some people are just protesting it because they're Marvel haters. It's like a DC group who wanted to tank the movie's ratings. Uh, there are, there's another group of people who are just saying it's not an appropriate representation of Africa. Dude, it's a Marvel movie that takes place in a fictional place. So we think we don't maybe Wakanda does exist, but no, in all seriousness, come on now, really, that's like me watching Blue's Clues and saying it's unrealistic for the dog to be that color. Like, come on, man, relax. There's some people out there that just grasp at straws, you know, but then you have another group. Now, this is really interesting, and this is the meat of the topic. I really want to hear you guys' thoughts. Remember, that's I'll talk. If you'll listen at Hotmail.com or I-T-I-Y-L underscore I-T-I-Y-L on Twitter. There's a group of people. A lot of people argue that it's specifically black women. I'll let you decide. I'll let you think of what type of group would come up with this. Um, (laughs) I would love to hear some of you guys' thoughts on what type of group would come up with this. But there's a group out there. So there was a rumor going around that Michael B. Jordan, who plays the antagonist in the movie, he's the the villain, uh, the co-star, co-star, um, and Michael B. Jordan, um, he was in you know Creed and uh, a bunch of other things, uh, really really huge right now. He's going to be on HBO's rendition of 451 Her- uh, Fahrenheit. Um, so he has a lot going on right now, and he, it was rumored. Not too long ago, I think it started like earlier in the year, but it, it really came to light recently. It was rumored that his girlfriend wasn't black. Not only was she not black, she was white. There's people out there who feel like that's not air quotes here for the cause. You can't be pro black if you date a white woman. You can't be all about black support and the black movement and truly genuinely feel that way if you're with someone who isn't 
black as a as a, a spouse or you're in a relationship with um and there's so many different angles here that we do not have enough time for but there's certain key observations that i made that it's huge one of the i, I don't remember what actresses it, it is but one of the actresses who a black actresses in the movie is actually dating a white man but that's no publicity there so now you can see kind of why certain people feel like this is just a group of black women, but there's no publicity with that black actress dating the white man. Um, but Michael B. Jordan took some heat and get this. They're actually wanting, wanting to protest the movie because he's dating a, a white woman, possibly. And this hasn't even been confirmed. They haven't even been seen together. It's just rumors. and. One of the hashtags for the protest, you know, because, of course, if it's not on Twitter, then it's not official. Right. So one of the hashtags for the protest was if you don't support our movement, we won't support yours. Boycott Black Panther. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know what? One day and I understand. Look, we're only we're we're still young guys. This is still only the third episode. But one day I am really I'm looking forward to someone who has a belief that. I disagree with to email into the show or tweet at tweet at me on on Twitter and and give me your side of the argument. I feel like there aren't going to be many people listening to it right now with opposing viewpoints, but I think that's just ridiculous. You can absolutely positively support your race and your culture a hundred percent, even if you date outside, because love has no color. Love has no color at all. Um you love who you love, period. I think that's just crazy to me that some people can just have that level of spite and hurt in their heart or were screwed over by someone or something in their heart so much they, they just try to impose their belief system on other people. That's just crazy to me. First of all, one of the blackest things a black man can do is take a, is date a white woman. First of all. OK. Second of all, why does it matter? How does him dating a white woman take away from him being black and being in a movie? How does that take away from the black cast? How does that take away from the significance of where we've come from as where we come from as a people in movies? How does that take away from his performance in the movie? Get out of here. I'll flag you. I'll flag you twice. Get out of here. Get out of here. Please, guys, please email in. Please tweet me. Let me know what you think about that. I think it's crazy. Let me know on a crazy scale, on the crazy scale of 1 to 10, how crazy you think that is. Or, hell, tell me if you agree with that. That's a good question. How about that, guys? Do you think you can stand behind your race and support your race 100% and be pro whatever your race is, pro-black, pro-Asian, pro-white, if there's a thing, if you date outside of your race? I truly, honestly believe you can. I mean, there's some hurdles and some obstacles you'll you'll come across, i.e. Michael B. Jordan, if it is true that he even is dating a white woman. But, I mean, I don't think there's it's such a huge deal. But then again, not a lot bothers me. Not not a lot really gets under my skin. So, but that, I mean, that that's huge to me, guys. You know, there's people out there who really think that the... The movie is now not as significant or the movie now is not as powerful because one of who one of the actors decide to they I'm sure you have some non blacks on the staff of this the movie I'm sure you have some producers some artists some special effects guys some production companies come on. Why is it? Why is it? And, and that's that's one of the angles. And I'm, I'm going to try not to go on a rant here, guys. But that's one of the angles. It's such a thing where. It's always one particular group of audience. And, and then here's another thing. Why. Is the perception. That this is specifically a group of black women. Wanting to do this, that they feel butthurt about this. I'm going to tell you why this is the perception. First and foremost, let's go with the obvious, the facts, the tangibles. If you go on Twitter and look at some of these hashtags on Twitter, or if you, you know, on Facebook, you'll see the majority of which are mainly black women or uh, Hispanic women talking about this. It's very, very rare 
talking about it and and for it like uh, our pro protest our pro yeah let's not see the movie because he's dating a non-black woman so the majority of these people who are for that are black women so that's a fact that's not me projecting my opinion that's not me telling you a false narrative like if you go and look you'll see that these are black women tweeting this stuff um but i think some of the intangibles that you can't really prove but just some of the tangible is just a perception like how i actually had a conversation with a few black women about this topic in in the past and even a few black men about this and black women genuinely feel like if they see a black man with a white woman they feel inferior they feel like oh i'm not good enough they immediately believe this black man went out and got this black woman because he thinks she is better than us. He thinks she is better than me. He doesn't. It's his escape. They view it as his escape. You know, you have you get a fight, with dad, with mom or dad. You get an argument with mom or dad. You run away from home. You go to a friend's house. I did that growing up. You go to a friend's house for a day or two and you come back, whatever. Right. Come back to an ass woman, ass whooping, but you come back. Right. So a lot of black women feel that way. They look at that like, oh, you couldn't take this. You couldn't handle me. They get really defensive, too. And they try to justify their some black women's. And this isn't all. This isn't all. Don't bite my head off. Some black women try to justify their toxic personality and their poisonous personality. And they they have no desire to growth. And they, they try to pitch this narrative of you couldn't handle a strong, boisterous black woman. So you went and got a white woman. Hell, that that person might be more boisterous and obnoxious than you are. You have no idea what that person is. You're just trying to justify your lack of a desire to change. But they, they view that. And this is specifically the black women that I've spoken with. They view that as. You think she is better than me. You think white is better than me. So you gave up on me. They also try to spin this narrative of we support black men, but y'all don't support black women. But you usually the, the, the black men that I've spoken to about the topic usually are indifferent or they, they're kind of lighthearted about it. Like, oh, you know, well, you know, he can't do some things that I can do blah 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 but it's like a lighthearted, jokingly tone especially like sexually but it's never really like too much resentment i mean i, I found there's like a lot of resentment in college the college setting college environment but just generally speaking especially as an adult i mean a lot of black men don't really care as much as the perception is but i think that's why it's the perception that this is a black w women's group who came up with this narrative and this protest thing and the funny part about it is it might not even be true. It might not even be accurate at all. Let the man date who he wants to date. Let the man date who he wants to date. I don't think it's a huge deal. But you guys tell me. You guys tell me. Let me know what you think. I would I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. Again, that's I'll talk if you'll listen at hotmail.com or I T I Y L underscore I T I Y L on Twitter. Please feel free to give me any feedback, your thoughts on the show, and just what your thoughts on the topics are. I would love to hear from them. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for, for hanging in there, staying strong. We're three weeks in. Remember the journey. Remember this part. It's almost like, I mean, you appreciate riding the bike more once you experience it with, with you know, with training wheels. And then you take the training wheels off and you got that feeling like, wow, you know, I'm really doing this on my own. That's kind of how I feel right now. Right now we're in the training wheel stage. I mean, we're, we're still riding. We're still cruising. But we're on the training wheel stage. And when the training wheels come off, guys, when, when we're cruising and we're just coasting downhill, I can't wait. I can't wait for that moment. But I'm enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying this moment while I'm at it. In the meantime, you guys enjoy the moment. Enjoy the future moments. And I will see you next week. Take care, everyone.